Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting functions graphically, meaning uh, if they were to ask you <clears throat> what is a graph added to another graph or a graph subtracted by another graph, uh, you'd be able to figure it out by just looking at the values of the graph. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, basically, the idea is that you would like to make a table for the domain for which the graph actually exists. So if you look at the graph, um, the graph will either be decreasing, increasing, uh, decreasing, constant, increasing, or decreasing, increasing, whatever the graph may be. Um, what you want to do is, for the domain where the graph exists, so basically this graph exists from negative 4 to positive 4, this graph exists from negative 4 to positive 4, this one from, it looks like negative 2 to about 2, or you can make it bigger if you want, this one negative 4 to 4. What you need to do is make a table. So. We're going to have two examples that I'm going to walk you through. Uh, example one and example number two. Example one says, what is the graph of f of x plus g of x, which is basically this graph plus that graph. Example two is, what's the graph of h of x minus two times k of x? So basically this graph minus two times this graph. Uh, so make a table depending on the domain or basically the, the values where the graph actually exists. And uh, I already have my table pre-made, so I don't waste too much time on it. Uh, my table is going to be going from, for the domain of each graph, which in this case is going to be from negative 4 to positive 4. Uh, that, are, that should cover all of my bases for the graph. So if I, if I fill in my, my table uh, from negative 4 to positive 4, so I'm going to have this graph is going to be my negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is my domain uh, for my graph of <clears throat> f of x and g of x. So if we look at the graph, what is the value of f of x at negative 4? So we look at the value of negative 4. f of x is actually way up here at the positive 4. So we're going to fill in the first value for f of x, which is positive 4. So I'm going to put a little 4 right up there. If we look at the value of the function at negative 3, well, that value is going to be at 3 on the y-axis. So I'm lining up the x with the y. So this is going to be at 3. If we look at where the function is at negative 2, that's going to be at positive 2. If we look at where the function is at negative 1, that's going to be at 1. At 0, it's going to be down at the y equals 0. At 1, is going to be at, it looks like between 0 and 1, so I'm going to write 0 0.5. At 2, it's going to be exactly at 1. Um, at 3, it's going to be at, well, it looks like 1.5. And at 4, it looks like it's exactly at 2. So all I did so far is I get the values for the graph, uh, basically, uh, based on this graph, and I wrote the values on the table um, correspondingly. Okay, so I have uh, my graph, and then I have my table with the corresponding values of the graph. I'm going to do the same thing with g of x. So g of x is up here. Um, basically, the value of g of x at um, negative 4 is going to be at 3. And then it goes down at negative 3 is going to be at 2. And then it stays the same, right? 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And then once it goes to the 2, then it actually goes back up. So once it gets to x equals negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. At 3, it goes up to the value of 3. And then at 4, it goes up to the value of 3 again. So it stays at 3. So there's my values for the, val the function f of x and my values for the function g of x. Now, now that I have my table and all the values for the function set up, well, I don't have to worry about the, the graph anymore. So I don't have a big square graph to worry about. All I got to do is just add the two numbers together, the two values. So it's as easy as saying, okay, so this whole column, when I have f of x plus g of x, I just have that plus that. So what's 4 plus 3 if I want to figure out what's f of x plus g of x? Well, 4 plus 3 equals 7. So I'm going to write 7 in there. 3 plus 2 equals 5. 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 2 is 3, 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 0.5 plus 2 is 2.5, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1.5 plus 3 is 4.5, 3 plus 2 is 5. And there we go, my values are all done. So what is the graph? That's what they're asking you, right? So what is the graph of f of x plus g of x? So if they don't give you a table... Like if they want you to find the graph of something and they don't give you a table, you have to make the table yourself. So very important. So now let's graph this. I have my column f of x plus g of x, which is the very last column. 
All I have to do now is graph the values. Uh, I have the same domain from negative 4 to positive 4. So at negative 4, my value of my f of x plus g of x function is 7. So I'm going to go all the way up to 7. Let me number this real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Bam, there we go. So there's my first dot. At negative 3, my value of f of x plus g of x equals 5. So I'm going to go all the way up to the 5. As I go along, I'm going to connect the dots together so you can start creating the uh, shape of the function. At negative 2, I have 4, so I'm going to go up to 4. At negative 1, I have the value of 3, so I'm going to go up to 3, connect the dots. At 0, I have the value of 2, connect the dots. At 1, I have the value of 2.5, so 1, 2.5, that's about there. At 2, I have 3, so put a little dot there. At 3, I have 4.5. So it increases a little more, and then 4, I have the value of 5. So 4 or 5 would be my last point. So there is my graph of f of x plus g of x. As weird as it looks, all you have to do is um, graph all the points, right? So you have your x values and you have your y values, which is f of x plus g of x. Um, let's do one more for comfort, just, just in case they switch it up on you guys and give you guys something like this. So h of x is this function, g of, uh, k of x is this function. They want us to figure out what is the graph of h of x minus 2 times k of x. So now we want to figure out h of x minus 2 times k of x. So um, let's do the same thing that we just did. We have to figure out where, does, where do these graphs actually exist. I'm going to go ahead and just play it safe like the last time and make, that, make those graphs go from negative 2 to positive 2 looks like this one exists and then this one exists everywhere from negative 4 to positive 4 and beyond because of the little arrows. So just so I can get the general shape of it, I'm going to make my life easy and make it just go from negative 2 to positive 2 because that's where I see the critical values. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so I have my, um, basically my values of x, my domain. So now let's look at the graph to see what the values are going to be. So if I look at negative 2 for h, right, so I'm looking at this one. At negative 2, my value of h is at 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to put a 4 right there for h. At negative 2, uh, wait, I did that already. At negative 1, my value is 1. At 0, my value is 0. At 1, my value is 1 again. Goes back up. At 2, my value is 4. And there we go. I'm done with that one. So let's skip to the kx one. So kx is the one that's on the right-hand side, so I have to figure out, okay, what is my value of kx for the domain of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2? Well, if you notice, this one's constant. It's always going to be the value of negative 2. So that makes my life easy because k, uh, k of x is going to be negative 2 no matter what. So at negative 2, is going to be negative 2. At negative 1, is going to be negative 2. At 0, it's going to be negative 2. At 1, is going to be negative 2. And then at 2, is going to be negative 2. So my table is set. Um, all I have to do now is subtract h of x minus 2 times k of x. So it's not just subtracting them. I have to actually add a constant of 2. Multiply k of x times 2 and then subtract. So be very careful with this. Sometimes it'll throw a number in there at you and you guys have to know what to do for that. So h of x is going to be 4 minus 2 times k of x, which happens to be negative 2. Okay, so... 4 minus 2 times negative 2, well, that would give you 4 negative times a negative as a positive. So this turns out to be 4 plus 4. I'm going to write it as 4 plus 4, which is equal to the value of 8 for the first one. Okay. Uh, if I do the second one, same idea. I'm going to have 1 minus 2 times negative 2. And then again, I have 1 negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So 1 plus 4 which turns out to be the value of 5. I do it again for the next one. It's going to be 0 minus 2 parentheses negative 2, or negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. So that's equal to 0 plus 4, which is just 4. Uh, the next one, I have the same idea. 1 uh, minus 2 parentheses negative 2, which is the value of k of x, which makes this whole thing become uh, 1 plus 4, which is 5 yet again. The last one is uh, 4 
minus 2 times negative 2. So that becomes 4 plus 4, which is the value of 8. So I have my values. Add negative 2, my value is 8. Add negative 1, my value is 5. Add 0, my value is 4. Add 1, my value is 5. Add 2, my value is 8. All I got to do is graph them. So the same as the last one. What is the graph of h of x minus 2 times k of x just using the graphs? Well, again, I make a table. Fill out, uh, fill out the values for what I actually need, depending on the h of x and k of x values. And then lastly, all I got to do is graph it. So negative 2, I'm going to graph the value of 8. So negative 2, I have to go up 8 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's my dot. At negative 1, I'm going to have the value of 5. So at negative 1, I'm going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my point. At 0, I'm going to have the value of 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. At 1, I'm going to have the value of 5. So 1, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At 2, I'm going to have the value of 8 yet again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, the graph of h of x minus 2 times k of x looks like this. If you notice, uh, the original graph of h of x, it's kind of like the same exact thing, but it looks like it got moved up quite a bit. So the graph of h of x minus 2 times k of x looks like this. Uh, this is called the parabola, uh, which is like the letter U. Uh, it looks like the same as this, but it looks like it got screwed over upwards. How many units did it get screwed over upwards? One, two, three. It looks like four, right? This, this originally was at the origin. Now it is going to be four spaces above. So it looks like it got translated of four spaces. Okay. I hope this video was helpful to you guys on adding and subtracting functions graphically. I'll see you guys on the next one.